Here it is. Geeks have been saying stuff about this since the day that Microsoft released it. Did you really think I would miss out on an opportunity like this to fiddle around with Windows 8's consumer preview? Yeah, let's do that. Question number one, which computer should I install it on? I most certainly will not be putting it on my main system because, well, it's my main system. And one of the things I want to do is I want to make the system dual boot between the current OS and the preview for obvious reasons. But one thing I'd like to do in case something goes wrong or if I can't uninstall it when the preview's over without blanking the drive, I'd like to make a disk image of the system as it is right now and then transfer everything back that way. So let's go see which would be the easiest to create a disk image for. Obsidian, aka the crap top, has 63 gigs used up, so if I made an image it would probably be about 60 something gigs. Piano, over at the media station, which currently has the old Super Nintendo hooked up for capturing video, is has 30 gigs used up. So let's make a disk image of Piano and install the Windows 8 thing on this one. This is good because I've, I wanted to see how this system would run on a somewhat dated system like this one to see if Microsoft's claims that it is a lot more uh, old system friendly, so to speak, than Windows uh, 7, see if those claims had any merit to them. So let's get to work using Seagate Disk Wizard to make an image of the hard drive as it is. We'll send that file off somewhere else because I'm sure there's more than enough room to store the darn thing at 30 gigs. I'll use Tuxedo as the server to store the image file since it has all that space and it'd be good to take the gigabit local network for a spin. And we're off! About 20 minutes or so and the entire hard drive of this machine will be a file on the other machine. Gotta love gigabit ethernet. Done! And what do you know, it actually was 20 gigs for 30 gigs of used space on a drive. Not bad for a pre-Windows 8 piano image. Okay, we're ready to roll here. Got some speakers here for sound because I usually only wear headphones over here because I'm usually mixing audio and video on this machine. But most importantly, let's get this on film because this rarely ever happens. A clean desktop. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I'm always hiding my desktop icons because, you know, sometimes my computer desktops can get just as messy as a real desk. But I, I prefer not to think of it as a mess as much as it is a work in progress. So let's see what happens without leaving Windows XP. Let's see what happens when we pop the disk in. See if we get one of those menus that says, hey, this version of Windows is newer than what you currently have. What do you want to do? All right, spinning up. These are parallel eight. These are Pata drives too. They just haven't died yet. So <laughs> the one and only ribbon cable left in any of my machines goes to these drives. But I like the whole ebony and ivory look, which is where, of course, the nickname Piano comes from for this machine. Ah, good. Oh, no. Your installation media cannot be used to install Windows. Your current version of Windows is 32-bit and does not match the architecture of the 64-bit installation media. Please insert the 32-bit media and restart Windows setup. No, I'm not going to do that. I want to see if this CD is bootable now. Because, yeah, this is running Windows XP 32-bit. Obviously, almost all versions of XP were 32-bit. But um, I don't want to be using 32-bit software for something this new. I'd rather use 64-bit software with hardly any RAM than uh, download the 32-bit version. Let's see if this CD is bootable. Pop this open, shut it down, and let's see. Turn off computer. Shut it down, and let's see if this will boot and try to install instead. Might help too with some of the uh, dual booting that we want to set up because I don't want to replace the OS. And if I have to, well, I've got the uh, image over there and we'll see how much everything works here. How come, not, how come I'm not getting a shutdown noise? Closing network, can I, oh, another Windows XP slow shutdown. I spoke too soon. Anyways, take two. Will it boot? That is the question. Do 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 No, just kidding. And um, no offense to Blendtec. Can't believe the whole will it blend thing's been around for more than five years now. Anyways. Come on, boot you piece of crap! Any day now. Gotta love how slow optical drives are. Boot! Boot! Press any key to boot! Good, it's booting, I think. What's that? Ooh, little fish. Is that some kind of logo for Metro or something like that? 
while we're waiting, now my initial impressions of Windows 8 were kind of iffy. I was like, what are you kidding me? Why would you so radically change Windows the way they were planning on doing it? I'm like, you know, the big thing I was concerned about when Windows was when Windows 8 was first announced was that the OS would become a jack of all trades. So they, they're trying to get it to run on stuff other than PCs, because nowadays PCs are sharing their stage in the personal computing world with lots of other devices. Some people call them post-PC devices. I just call them non-PC devices, because I know that there's always going to be a use for PCs somewhere out there. Just maybe not as much as before when desktops practically had a monopoly on everything. <laughs> So, the, my, that was my initial concern, but now that I think of it, and with some of the other stuff going on, like the Wii U controller with the built-in touchscreen, I'm wondering if maybe um, computers of the future will actually have a small touchscreen alongside a big screen for, you know, for touch-sensitive stuff. Perhaps one of the things that I hear the most when it comes to uh, touch screens. The big thing that people are worried about with touch screens is getting fingerprints all over them. So there's kind of that little conflict between having a small screen that's touch sensitive but might get messy and having a big screen that you can keep clean, that you can put movies and stuff on and have a huge desktop. I'm thinking maybe, you know, a small little tiny touch screen similar to like a touch sensitive control panel today, like a Crestron box or something like that. You know, maybe there can be a more consumer oriented version of that so the computers of the future will have a huge screen for the times you need a big screen and a small portable like little touch sensitive thing for doing all the touch sensitive stuff it's an idea and I'm sure the Wii U will probably be the testing grounds for that with that wild and crazy controller but anyways nowadays I'm thinking you know Windows 8 really represents Microsoft coming to their senses and acknowledging that they're not invincible and they're gonna have to change with the times so I'm very curious if this thing's even doing anything, as to uh, whether they can pull this off or not. And since there is a desktop and the ability to use things other than some of the newer input devices that have come out for computers and become more standardized over the past couple of years, it'll be very interesting to see if Windows 8 can definitely be not a jack of trades but ace at none, but an all of the above kind of operating system. Okay, the disk has stopped and we're getting that classic swirly dot thing that has been become like a de facto standard for this type of stuff. Okay, first impressions time. So it's nice that the installation disk for Windows 8 starts off with a blue screen. I, mean, <laughs> I feel totally at home. <laughs> Real nice. Start right off with a blue screen right off the bat. Okay, anyways. Okay, so after sitting there blue screened for a couple of minutes. <laughs> We're finally beyond the blue screen and ready to set everything up. So English, United States, US, etc, etc, etc. And let's do install now. Now here's the thing, if it detects the previous installation of Windows XP, I want to know is, if it, is it going to give me the option to dual boot? Ooh, setup is starting. Okie dokie, let's get this thing installed. I wonder how long this is going to take. This is on a DVD-ROM, so it's not like, uh, so there's more data to deal with. So, you know how slow optical drives can be. So this might take a while, which is why you're going to see me skipping around. And I'm not doing any kind of real-time thing or anything along those lines. So, we got the little spinny thing for now, and when it finally does stuff besides sit here on its blue screen, <laughs> I'll continue the video. What? This was a download. Where am I going to get a product key for Windows 8 from? It should be on the back of the box that Windows came in or a message that shows that you bought Windows. Uh, this, is a, this is a consumer preview. It was just an ISO file. Where in the world am I going to get a product key from? Dashes we added automatically. Well, I can type it in, but I can't click out of it. Privacy statement. Medic! Okay, so the crap top will be on backup duty for this project, in case I have to Google anything. I did some poking around and found out that even if you download the gigantic ISO image and burn it to a disk, you're still going to need a product key, which comes from the uh, internet installer. So I'm going to take a little bit of a risk here. I don't have, I didn't want to install it on the crap top, but I'm going to download the consumer preview internet installer, get to the part where you get a product key, and then type that in to continue the installation on the other machine. I just hope I don't mess anything up on this one in the process. Oh brother, this ain't looking good. I just hope I can get the product key and just cut everything off. Well, that worked pretty well. 
I was able to use the generic installer to the point where I got the product key and then red button the installation and come back to this machine and have it work. So here we are. So we can either upgrade from Windows XP to that, keep file settings and apps, or install a fresh copy, which is what I'm going to go with. I always install fresh copies when I do stuff like this. Did it with Windows 98 and Windows 2000 back in the day, and I can do this with Windows XP and Windows 8 now. And I've got a disk image in case the whole machine gets messed up, so I can just blank everything and go back to what I had before. Problem number two. If the partition you've chosen contains files from a previous Windows installation, these files and folders will be moved to a folder named Windows.old. You'll be able to access Windows.old, but you won't be able to use your previous version of Windows. Oh, nice! I need the image already, because I have to repartition the drive to have separate partitions for the two OS's. Here we go again! The good news is I have this old Seagate Disk Wizard boot CD, and it was just here. I didn't put it over here on purpose, but it looks like I'm going to get to use it after all. Oh, now I've done it! Seagate Disk Wizard didn't give me any options to change the partitions on the drive. It just asked me if I wanted to wipe out all the existing partitions on it. So now I've got a 1 hour 37 minute download time. I guess the built-in network driver on the CD for this program isn't as good as the gigabit driver that was on the system earlier. So essentially what I've just done is I've rolled this machine back to before the install began. You know what? Heck with dual booting. I've got an image file. I'll just upgrade to Windows 8, do the whole hog and things like that. And if I run into trouble later on, then I'll just... Now, do this again. Ugh, I'll bet I can order a pizza and have it arrive and be delivered before this stuff gets finished. Did I call it or did I call it? Mmm, pepper and onion. Windows XP, man! Okay, we're back to where we were. Let's try this again. Okay, we're back to where we were before, so let's do an upgrade instead. The computer started using the Windows installation disk, remove the installation disk, restart the computer so that Windows starts normally. Then insert the installation disk and restart the upgrade. Do not select custom advanced perform an upgrade. Custom advanced call installs a new copy of Windows and deletes your programs and settings. Oh shoot, I might not even be able to upgrade to this, upgrade this thing because of the 32-bit, 64-bit thing. Shoot. I might just have to blank everything and just install a fresh copy of Windows 8 on here just to check it out. And, uh, well, at least I got the disk image, and I know it works! <laughs> yep, as I thought. It's instructed me to basically mess everything up all over again. This isn't going to run, because this is a 32-bit operating system. And I want to install the 64-bit version, because I think, you know, that's where it's at as far as the future of computing goes. I mean, 32-bit, um... I don't know. I don't think it has much of a future other than legacy support and things like that. And even in that case, you could at least run it in a virtual machine. There we go. That's what I thought. We had to do a completely clean install. So that means that that disk image is basically going to have all my data on it until I'm done with the trial. Okay, well, I didn't store much data on this machine anyways, and most of the stuff that I made on here as far as production goes, I moved to something else. So, fresh install time. Okay, this time around I picked the fresh installation of Windows and I had it install onto the drive without blanking it out. So it's going to replace the old Windows on there and we'll see how it is when we go to try and take this off at the end of the trial. So this is all the information we need, etc. Your computer will restart several times to finish installing Windows. Okay, so let's go through this and see what happens. Okay, signs of life here. The fish is back and getting system ready. That must be a good thing. One restart later, we got the fish, and something else now. Is it going to start up? Let's turn up the speakers in case you get a really nice startup noise. Okay. Just some noise from the rattly CD-ROM drive, because this thing's really old. Fishy again, and preparing! <laughs> What's with this fish logo thing? Ooh, okay, we're into the personalization and stuff like that. So, pick a color and give your PC a name. All right, let's go with my traditional uh, bluish type color. Uh, oh, oh, it's an optical illusion. Made it look like it was more than one color because the because uh, of the black dot in the middle. PC name, of course, is going to be piano. 
Same as it was under XP. Focus, you piece of crap. All right, this camera is really touchy with its focus sometimes. Next, you can get through some basics quickly. Oh yeah, of course, I picked blue, so now we're setting up windows with a blue screen. That's always nice. Get through some basics quickly by choosing these express settings, PC, blah, blah, blah. Help things run more smoothly, etc., 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 etc. Use express settings. You know, this is a test system, so who cares if it sends stuff to uh, Microsoft? That matter of fact, feedback is what this is supposed to be all about. Use your email address as a Microsoft account to sign into Windows 8 Consumer Preview. We won't send you spam. <laughs> Let's set that up.